The following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back, everyone. It is a new day here in the X Zone. It is now April the 6th, 2023. And uh, I am Rob McConnell coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com or Mr. X at exxonradiotv.com. On all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And we're being brought to you tonight by the good people at Beautiful Mind Coffee. It's uh, coffee that your brain will truly love, but it's just not coffee. It's actually brain delicious. Visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca. This hour, we're talking about my favorite topic, angels. And uh, joining us now from Prince Edward Island is the one and only angel lady herself, Karen Forcing. Karen, welcome back to the X-Zone. Good to see you without a hurricane blaring in the background. That's, that's right. It's so nice. At least it's just a little bit of snow, even though it's April, but better than a hurricane. <laughs> you know, you've got snow. Uh, my dad lives in Montreal, and uh, God bless him, he's 95 years young. And he was, uh, I was driving around uh, prior to getting to the studio today, doing some chores for my wife. And I heard about this, uh, this severe freezing rainstorm that was hitting southwestern Quebec where he lives. And uh, I was really concerned, pulled the car over, talked to my dad. And he says, everything's fine here. So uh, thanks for calling, son. You're an angel. I said, no, dad, I'm not an angel. I'm just your son. <laughs> so there you go. Coincidence. Dad called me an angel. I've got the angel <laughs> lady on this morning. So uh, thank you so much, Karen. It's always great talking to you. Now for our listeners and viewers who haven't had the opportunity of, of, of you know, hearing you in the past, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your, your, your voyage, your quest your crusade into becoming yeah. the angel lady. The angel lady, yeah. My my autobiography, Angel Lady of the Maritimes, talks about that because it's interesting for me. Uh, I'm not like a third generation psychic. I certainly was not talking to dead people when I was a child. Mm -hmm. And my background is very much in the biological model. I have a bachelor in nursing, and I'm also a retired military nurse. So I went from a military nurse into working with spirituality, doing extensive training and communicating with angels and dead people. So mm -hmm. before I left the military, I started extensive training uh, with my spiritual path and doing the work that I do now as a spiritual counselor. But having the background in mental health, I was a mental health nurse, um, certainly gives me a wonderful skill set that that bodes well with my work as a spiritual counselor now, especially when I work with a lot of grieving people when I'm communicating with the deceased people. One thing I've learned over the many years and being married to a nurse myself and having had the opportunity of being invited to many of their after nursing hour events, yeah. nurses are very intuitive, yes. very empathic, yeah. and yeah. they're very, very caring people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, does this help you being the angel lady? Absolutely it does because it means I learned – long ago and certainly as a, as a, what made me a, a good mental health nurse was learning from my mental health team including psychologists the best thing they taught me is always trust my gut instinct mm -hmm. which i also call divine guidance but others would call it gut instinct. so so what were you you were saying that uh, you were taught by the people that you were working with to trust yeah. your gut instinct to trust me yeah i remember when i was a first new mental health nurse and, and a little mm -hmm. nervous um, with my counseling um skills and abilities and trusting myself and constantly whether i was working with a psychologist psychiatrist or social workers because i worked with a diverse diverse team they always said you gotta trust your gut if your gut's telling you something's off if your gut's telling you this you gotta listen to it and then ask further questions from what your gut's saying so i've learned anyone if they're good at what they do they're trusting the gut instinct where does angels fit into all of this 
same thing. Angels in my, to me, is the same thing as your gut instinct. It's just a way of angels getting through messages through your body, through what your gut's telling you. It's to me, it's the same. Are more are more and more people having angel communications and contact than they were years ago, thanks to people like you, your books and your media appearances? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found that people more well. Really, what it is is people are more open about talking about it. They've always been doing it, but when I started to write my first book, I received so much feedback from people saying, "Oh, now I can talk about it more openly." And then I wrote the second and third and the fourth book because of that, so that it gave a pathway and a venue for people to discuss their own angelic experiences and and experiences from receiving messages from angels and their heavenly loved ones. So it's made it easier, including with more TV shows, more talking mm -hmm. about it to make it people more open about talking about their own experiences and not worrying about being labeled the crazy because they yeah. still get that. Uh, I, people think I'm crazy, but this has happened. And, and then they go on and describe their stories. Yeah. Um, uh, what I hear a lot is Rob, you're not going to believe this, but <laughs> you're not going to believe this, but yeah. you might think I'm crazy, but <laughs> I, I've learned a long time ago doing this show that the people who think they're crazy are the real sane ones. Yeah, The saner ones. That's right. That's right. When did you have your first angel experience? Um, working with angels versus working with dead people is a little bit different. Dead people, um, communicating with them honestly didn't happen until I started my spiritual training in my late thirties. Angels were different though, because I've always believed in God. I've always believed in, mm -hmm. in angels because of my Catholic upbringing. So even when I was younger, I, I've, I've always talked to angels on a personal level for myself, asking for help and, and trusting my God and listening to them. And, and just always making a commitment to, to live my life to to the life path I'm supposed to, even if I didn't always understand where it's supposed mm -hmm. to take me. I do remember one of the first times I felt an angel, and that was in my military career. I was doing a 13K rock sack march, and it was something had to pass from part of my officer training to become a nurse. And I, of course, was determined to, to pass the course because I wanted to stay in the military and I wanted to be a military nurse. And 13Ks, 13 kilometer rucksack march is not fun for someone like me who's only five foot two and I'm, I'm humping like 50 pounds, my back, combat boots, rifle, and the whole bit. Like I'm wearing the same kid, a, a man, like twice my height and build is going to be doing this exact same thing. So I was trying to get through this stupid mm -hmm. march. And towards the end, because I was the slowest person, I'm always the slowest in these marches. Um, but towards the end, I, I was thinking, oh, God, like, I don't know if I'm going to make it. And, and I suddenly felt this, uh, so, like someone touched my back and kind of pushed me forward. And I'm, in, a, in the military, you do 13K marches. They often have medics or other people at the back who will help you physically, really kind of give you a little push to, to get you through the last part if you need some help. So they're not doing the whole march, but they'll help you if you need it. And I thought, oh, good. Someone's behind me helping me out. And thankfully, they're not yakking at me because I'm just trying to focus <laughs> one step at a time. I don't need someone saying stupid, encouraging words I don't want to hear. But I felt the presence and I felt the pressure on my back and it literally moved me forward. And then at the end, I turned around to thank the person and thank them for not yakking at me. There's no one there. And then I realized, oh my God, that was an angel helping me. And I, did, I didn't even know because I, I didn't even have the energy to look around and, until the end of it and realize there's nobody there. And that was the start. That was the start. That was the start paying far more attention to angel signs and angels around me. Yeah. Is that an, uh, an issue that we all face? I mean, those who, who have had, who have what they think might be an angel is that we don't recognize or are not willing oh, yeah. to, to accept. Yeah. Both sometimes that people just generally don't recognize it. And, and, and I've got stories in, in all my books talking about how angels can only appear in human form but then they just suddenly disappear. And you're like, hey, where'd that human go? Well, mm -hmm. because there was no human, it was an angel appearing in human form to help you out. Um, and then other times it's like, I don't think I'm ready to to believe this. Certainly for me, I was fine with divine beings. Dead people was another thing. When they started talking to me, I'm like, 
mm, no, I'm not too sure. I really <laughs> want to hear this and believe this, and I don't know. I'm not too sure I'm up for this one. So that took me yeah. a little bit, bit to warm up, too. I just started pretending it was not happening at first. I did. I'm like, I'm not ready for this. Was that a natural progression for you because of your, yeah. your nursing? And I, I'm sure that you had to deal with end-of-life matters with, with patients. Right. Uh, yeah. Was that the next step, actually talking to the dead people? Talking to dead is part of my work as a counselor to help people through a grieving process and make their lives easier for them when they're grieving. Mm -hmm. And because I, it, it just as a mental health nurse and a counseling, I did a tremendous amount of, of grief, um, healing and therapy with people. That ended up becoming a natural progression. So for example, when I was still in the military, I remember one time I was with one of the soldiers and he, and he was grieving his father who had recently passed. And I remember feeling and hearing his father, because after about three sessions, I was getting familiar with his father's um, essence and, and presence from my client talking about him. And I remember in one of the sessions thinking, oh my God, it's like, I really feel the man right here. But again, still not open to the thought that could be happening. I'm like, no, no. And I can hear the guy. I can learn to hear his dead father talking like, no, still not, no, not ready to go. They're not doing it. So I just ignored it at first. Wasn't ready. And that's okay. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll get there when you're ready. <laughs> Is there a difference between a dead person and a spirit and a ghost? Or are they all the same? Um, Everyone uses different terminology, but for me, a ghost is a dead person who hasn't crossed over into the afterlife, so they're stuck here on Earth. So their their vibrations are pretty low, and, and they're lost souls that, that, that until they cross over, they can't progress. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not a good feeling to be around a ghost versus a dead person who's human died, gone on to the afterlife. They've transitioned over, no problem. Spirit is a vague term, so I don't tend to use it. That can be almost anything. A lot of people use it for dead people, but they can use it for various terms so I'm, I'm really picky with people saying look you know here's what i mean by this term because i want to be on the same page with the language when i'm communicating with my clients because someone could come to see me and say oh, i want an angel reading and really what they want is medium reading they want to talk to their dead mom i'm like oh okay well they call you dead mom an angel i i don't but that's okay I'll, as long as i know what your language means i'll switch over to that <laughs> Karen, we've got to take our first break, and I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. Always a great pleasure talking to you, and once again, thank you very much for your service. Yes, thank you. Stand by, Karen. Karen Forrest is our special guest, www.karenforrest.com, and Forrest has two R's in it. That's K-A-R-E-N-F-O-R-R-E-S-T.com. This is The Exxon. I'm Rob McConnell. We'll be back after this break. Don't go away. <music> Question, what is the name of the unique blend of coffee you get that has been formulated by a neurologist, a neurobiologist, and a pharmaceutical chemist? Answer, you get Beautiful Mind Coffee, a unique coffee blend that tastes great and has herbal ingredients that your brain will love, and it is not just coffee, it's brain delicious. Dr. Rathbone, Dr. Jang, and Dr. Winslow the scientific team that created Beautiful Mind Coffee, decided to collaborate on a coffee focusing on brain health. As for those herbal ingredients found in Beautiful Mind Coffee, Dr. Rathbone Dr. Jang, and Dr. Winslow, utilizing their combined extensive scientific research background, worked with many natural and herbal products until the exact formulation that is found in Beautiful Mind Coffee was created. With a unique scientific formula not found in any other coffee being sold or served, Beautiful Mind Coffee is the only coffee blend that contains three herbal ingredients found to aid in boosting your daily mental clarity and focus. Every cup of Beautiful Mind Coffee contains scientifically formulated amounts of maca root powder, green tea extract, and American ginseng, all supporting good brain health. Taking care of your brain's health now can help delay or prevent the onset of cognitive dysfunction, including dementia, Alzheimer's, and more general memory loss as you get older, just by enjoying the delicious flavor of our roasted coffee and herbal ingredients found exclusively in Beautiful Mind Coffee. 
Did you know that cognitive dysfunction also refers to deficits in attention, verbal and nonverbal learning, short-term and working memory, visual and auditory processing, problem-solving, processing speed, and motor functioning? For more on Beautiful Mind Coffee, the three scientists who formulated Beautiful Mind Coffee, and more details on the three unique herbal ingredients in Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca. Beautiful Mind Coffee is now available online at Amazon.ca and Amazon.com. To order Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca today. Welcome back, everyone. Karen Forrest is with us, the angel lady. Her website is karenforrest.com, and Forrest has two R's in it, exclamation. That's karenforrest.com. Karen, do angels communicate with people and through their dreams? Yes, absolutely. That's actually pretty common, especially if you're more visual. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason is that our minds are more relaxed during our dream time. So it's easier uh -huh. to communicate. We're during the day. Yeah, good luck trying to get our attention. It's hard. We're busy. I'm busy. <laughs> it's <was> hard. <laughs> so uh, both angels and your loved ones in heaven frequently come through in your dream state. Often, especially your loved ones in heaven, people will say, oh, look, I dreamt about the person, but they said nothing. And then they'll call me going, what's the message? What's the message? I'm like, there is none. They, they came to you looking good to let you know they're okay that's the message so there you didn't miss anything you, you just yeah. you just spent a small fortune for me to tell you <laughs> there, there's no yes they love you they're okay that's that's what they're conveying but frequently if it's a loved one passed on they're not going to say anything in the dream all you remember when you wake up is that you saw them and they look good and you, and you felt peacefulness and love from them so you feel that but they don't tend to say anything do those who have who have died and left this plane, do they always communicate with those that they've left behind? Yes, they do. Whether or not we're listening is another thing altogether, but mm. they're constantly trying to let you know that they're around you, they're, they're trying to help you, they're, they're guarding you in your life, trying to make your life better um, for yourself, and just letting you know that, that they love you and they're okay. So yes, yes, absolutely they are. Yeah, it's just taking the time. So often I tell people, look, you want a message from them? Just sit with them for a minute. Just say, okay, you know, mom who's passed on, I just want to sit with you and hang out for a minute. You're going to feel them. You'll feel their presence around you. So it's now, hard when we're busy. You know, we're always I, busy. I, I guess hard to get it. <laughs> I, I would imagine so. And, and, and I've often wondered if all the electronics we have in today's society, if they are a deterrent or if they actually uh, mask the efforts of those from the other side or who are trying to communicate with us no it's the opposite uh dead people especially more than angels but dead people love working with uh electricity and electronics they think it's funny so they're the ones no we don't think it's funny we, we were sitting going why is my phone turning on and off why is right. my TV flickering it's because mm -hmm. they're trying to get your attention and i tell people whoever you feel at the time or thinking about it at the time that's the one with the sense of humor in heaven trying to grab your attention. <laughs> uh, I've had it, and I still get it. It still freaks me out. You think I'd be used to it now, but my father, who's been passed on well over 10 years now, will roll up and down my car windows. My, my car windows are electronic, and that's my car is not even turned on. And then I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, my car is possessed. So I'm like, Angel, what's going on? And then she's like, relax, it's your dad. I'm like, oh, yeah, I knew that. I just forget. I go right into a panic. And I know, right. and I still go into automatic. Oh my God, my car is possessed. What's wrong with my car? It's turned off and the windows are going up and down. And <laughs> it's dad, it's daddy. They like to play with electricity. So it's actually electronics. It's a good thing. <laughs> Cause they, that, would, that would freak me out if I know my car is off. I'm turned off. 
it's turned off and I saw the windows go up and down. I, I, w I would freak out. I really would. And I still would. do. I mean, like it happens usually a couple times a year and I still freak out, go right into panic mode for the first few seconds till I go to the angels going, what's going on? They're like, come on, Karen, you know this. It's yeah. your dad. I'm like, oh yeah, I know. I forget. I forget because I go into panic at first when that happens. <laughs> Did your dad have a sense of humor? Yes, he does. There you Lots go. You have a sense of humor. <laughs> Love working with electricity, right? They yeah. do. So I tell people embrace it because they're, they're good. The only thing that's a nuisance for me sometimes when I'm doing private sessions with mediumship is that right. because I am working with energy with the, the deceased is that it can uh, mess up when people are trying to record the session and it messes it up. Like the recording doesn't always go through and they're like, oh, I didn't get it all recorded. I'm like, no, nah, I, I, I tell you, you can record it all you want, but good chance it's going to get messed up because I'm dealing with energy here and it messes up that type of thing too. So that's annoying <laughs> for people. Has it ever happened to you where somebody has come to you for your for your work as a medium and mm -hmm. asked you to communicate with someone on the other side and and you get the message hey i don't want to talk to them no not ever no really? ever ever not yeah people ask that they're like oh i wonder if they're going to come through i'm like that is the opposite i have to control it because i have never and i've spoken to tens of thousands of dead people not ever had one dead person say i don't want to talk some in my experience can be quieter than others and and that and that's normal um because if they're quiet in their lifetime they're not mm -hmm. going to Catty, catty normally in heaven either or if they've been deceased for 20 plus years they tend to be a little quieter but if i ask them questions they'll, they'll talk they'll talk but i've never had flat out someone say i'm not talking i have occasionally have them say i won't talk about certain subjects when my clients ask like you know, delicate questions will come up someone will say oh i found out that i've got a half sister from my dad that we just learned about and <laughs> does dad want to talk about and dad's like no <gasps> <laughs> okay, well, there we go. Other times they will talk about it um, too. Most of the time they will, but occasionally I'll get, I don't want to talk about that. And so I, I honor it and I move on to the next subject in the conversation. But they'll never not talk. That That's just absolutely does not happen at all. So how do you control who comes in and who stays out? Because I'm sure once the other side realizes that you have the ability yep. to communicate, everybody yep. just wants to have a chat session with you. How do you, how do you control it? Tight, tight, tight controls. That's why I work at a professional level. I have tight controls. So first of all, during a session, I ask my client, who do you want me to speak to? Because I ask God to bring them in one at a time. So I try to control by saying, let's just bring them in one at a time. You got me to want me to speak to three people today. Tell me the first person. I'll ask God to bring them through. Everyone else has to be quiet. They got to shut up. I don't want to hear them because I, I pick up on them. I hear them. They're all trying to crash in. Um, and then other times I literally have to tell them, be quiet. Stop interrupting. I'm trying to focus on one person at a time. Otherwise, it gets confusing with the messages yeah. as to who's saying what. And it, and it's like a three, four, five-way conversation, which that's a lot mentally on me, trying to <laughs> weed through all that information and, and words all at the same time. So I, I basically, I let God and Archangel Michael um, control that. And, and I tell the dead people what to do. And I also threaten them. I'll say, look, you don't smarten up. I'll cut you off and I'll tell God, take you away and I'll stop talking to you. And that usually settles them down enough to stop interrupting so much so that I can focus on who I'm talking to. Have you ever had anyone from the not so nice realm try to interfere with mm -hmm. what you're doing? I haven't, but again, as a professional, I know how to handle that to make sure it doesn't happen. I, I say a prayer at the beginning of all my sessions that it is divinely guided and protected. And with dead people, I'm very, very careful because I would never allow just any dead person to come through. I have boundaries that the angels, Archangel Michael and God have for me uh, in place that they, they enforce, including that I can't inadvertently invite in a negative dead person. So if a dead person, they've crossed over, but they kind of chose to be in a little lower level vibrationally, and I don't, I don't want to talk to them. They're, 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 they're disruptive souls. I don't need that in my session. If that were to inadvertently happen, and I say, hey, you know, bring in this person, the angel's are like, hey, look, that person's in lower vibrational level that, that you've asked us not to bring through. Do you really want me to bring them through? I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> keep them away. Don't bring them through. 
didn't realize they're low vibration, don't want them near me, disrupting the session at all. Yeah, so, so again, tight controls and a lot of very specific intents for that. How does someone get to know who their guardian angel is? I tell people you want to get to know, go hang out with them every day. Take them in and hang out with them. And just say guardian angel, you and only you. And I don't want them, anyone else, just you so I can get a feel for you. And hang out with them and just trust what comes to you. And in time, with practice, and it is a lot of practice. That's what I had to do to fine-tune my skills. It was practice and practice and practice and practice. Just hang out with them. And ask them to hang out with you. You'll feel them. You'll feel them. You'll start to hear them. But you got to take the time, even if it's only for a minute, to do so. That's how you get to know them. And then the other thing is hang out with them and ask them for help in your daily life. Because the more you ask for help, the more you get familiar with their energy and how they can help you. So they want you to ask for their help. Yes, they do. Yeah. Both, both, both your relatives in heaven and, and divine beings um, because of free will. So they absolutely want you to ask for help. And it makes your life a lot easier. When I started to learn that spiritually, mm -hmm. I had no no qualms about bothering the angels. Some people think, oh, aren't you bothering them? I'm like, well, no. First of all, you're trying to put a human trait on a divine being. So no, you're not bothering them. I didn't think that. I'm like, I'll bother them all day long. No problem. If it makes my life easier, I'm going <laughs> to. So I do. And, and when I realize it, it helps, I was actually quite surprised how much it helps me. Then I just, I never stopped. Every day throughout the day, I'm asking the angels or my loved ones in heaven, my, my relatives in heaven to help me out with things. Yeah. I would imagine because of your, your past professional life as, as a nurse and a member of the military, that when it comes to dealing with children on the other side, it mm -hmm. must be hard for you. Yes. Yeah. Kids, that's tough. That's tough. Um, the, the grief anyway, but one of the hardest griefs for, for me when, I, when I'm communicating with dead people, it is children. It is. I can, you know, talk to your dead mom, dad, grandpa. Look, they're old. They died. That's natural. Yeah. But to talk to a child that's passed on and I'm talking to the parent, that's emotional for the parent. I find it hard. It's emotional for me, too. Very much emotional when it's a child. Yeah. You must be exhausted after a, after a session. How do you, um, how do you, how does Karen take care of Karen? Yeah. Yeah. I do a lot. I do. I do. I have this, uh, like very strong daily spiritual practices in the place so that I don't burn out. Cause I, I burnt out in the past as a nurse. That's not fun. I don't want to ever go back to that space. So I do a lot to take care of myself. Um, but even after each session, very specifically, I asked angels to help me cut the cords, which means really say the negative energy from the session or, or the emotions that could be coming up within me that I'm feeling during a session. Cause they, it can be so emotional what people are talking about, um, that I'm picking up on their emotions. So I tell the angels, okay, I, I can tell my clients have intense grief or pain or anger. I, I get that, but I don't want to take it on. So don't let you know. So I'm very conscious. Don't take it on. Feel it. Understand what they're going through. But don't take it on personally, because I'll be a, I'll be a wreck by the end of the day if I did that. <laughs> so so I have very strong spiritual uh, practice, but even health practices, eating healthy, working out, fresh air, like all that. I'm so particular about following good physical, mental, spiritual practices. It, otherwise, I can't effectively do my work. I, I, I would burn out and I wouldn't be as good in, in my work if I didn't have those practices into place. Karen, you and I have to take our break at the bottom of the hour. Please stand by. And Nation, our guest this hour is Karen Forrest. She's the angel lady in Prince Edward Island. She has four books out, right, Karen? Four books? Yeah, four, bo four published books. Yeah. And I have, uh, and I believe they're available on Amazon and other fine online. Amazon and and chapters, yep. <laughs> And you and I will be back on the other side of this break as we continue right here in the Exome from our broadcast center in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. I'm Rob McConnell. Don't go away.
And welcome back, everyone. Karen Forrest, the angel lady, is with us uh, all the way from Prince Edward Island. By the way, we uh, we talk about Beautiful Mind Coffee here on the show, and Beautiful Mind Coffee is actually roasted and packaged in in at Clyde River in Prince Edward Island. It's just down the road for me. I had no idea. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, Karen, how does somebody know if their house is haunted by a ghost or a spirit? Or when it comes to this kind of activity, it's one and the same. Yeah. Um, it can be different. If it's a ghost, in my terminology, a dead person who hasn't crossed over, it's typical signs, because I do a lot of house clearings for people, but mm -hmm. you'll feel very uncomfortable in a certain part of your house where you just will not want to hang out at all. It will feel cold. It feels creepy. Uh, you might be seeing like a dark shadows. Um, you will sometimes people will hear things like banging or clanging mm -hmm. kind of rather disruptive notice noises or more more indication of a ghost or if it's this nicer spirit like your your, your passed on grandma type thing what you feel that's that's the opposite that feels good the, the, those ones that don't take away from your home they stay right you feel peace you feel loved you feel relaxed you feel happy you feel comfort you you can feel their presence you feel at ease so if it's someone you're comfortable with and it's a loved one from heaven or an angel you're going to feel relaxed but if it's a if it's a ghost uh, not pleasant feeling it, it, often in your own body you'll feel tense or nauseous or knotted up when you have a earthbound spirit or ghost in your home so how would somebody have this presence leave and let them get back to a normal peaceful life yeah that's where they often hire me to do house clearings it's it's not always easy i I can tell people the very first step, really the main step, is go to a divine source like God, angels, pure love, pure light, whatever term you want to use. But go to a divine source and ask a divine source to get rid of that negative presence. Do not ask that negative presence to leave on their own because that's like asking a burglar coming into your house to please leave. They're like, yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> don't want to. And that will be the attitude of a ghost. But if you bring a divine source, that's like the police coming and saying, no, you're going to leave. Yeah. You're leave. So I tell you, please evoke a divine source. Don't try to do it on your own. Don't tell them to leave without a divine source overseeing that. It's just easier, more effective. Do do religious artifacts in the house help protect the house? For example, uh, people no. have uh, no way. No, no. What it does, though, is it helps people invoke a divine source, which then can lead to protection. But the physical object means nothing. But if people use the physical object to, to connect it with a divine source, that I mm -hmm. get that. That's that's common with people. That that's fine. But the object itself. No, no if you use an object to connect with a divine source through your own way, yes, that works. How about holy water? Same thing. It's it's you can bless it all you want. Oh, it's yeah. still holy water, but if you're sitting there and going, okay, through this holy water, you know, I'm invoking mm -hmm. God or Jesus. Well, the fact you just invoke God and Jesus is what's going to help you. It's not the physical holy water itself. Now I understand that you do saging. So how does that work? Yeah. I'm still, even when I use that, because to me, it's still an object here on earth. Uh, it's from the earth, but I still invoke a divine source. So when I use, I do use sage on a regular basis. I like to smell it. It's a form of clearing. It, it's not the only way, but it's one way. But even then when I'm saging, I'm still invoking the angels or God or Jesus or a divine source to work through the sage to do the clearing that I'm asking for. So I don't never just use the sage by itself and run around with sage doing this is like, no, I'm doing that with the angels with me, using the sage as a sacred object. Why is it that some ghosts go to the light, cross over, and others remain? Yeah. My experience, I mean, that's a good question, because when I start working with ghosts, I, I start to learn. The, the two main reasons I found when I'm helping ghosts um, cross over into the light when I do clearings mm -hmm. One is addictions. If the human had an addiction when they're alive, they might not be ready to give it up. So they hang on to earth because in heaven, they're not going to have that addiction. They're like, yeah, I'm not ready to give up that addiction. So I'll go find somewhere where the addictive behavior takes place or attach myself to someone who has the same addiction. And the other one, which is really sad and very sad when I see this, but it's so calm, 
is people are afraid to cross over because they're afraid of being judged that they might have learned in religion that you're going to go to hell and you're going to be judged and they're like oh my god i wasn't perfect in my life and mm -hmm. i don't go to hell and i don't want to be judged so i'm just going to stay here and i'm like oh no for heaven's sakes go to the light like literally go to the light will you you're not going to be judged so it's fear judgment and addictions are the two common things i've noticed how can people improve their intuitive abilities a million different ways there's so many ways that's where i tell people sit down and work with what works for you some mm -hmm. people it could be something as simple as listening to music you know i'm not a musical mm -hmm. person it's not my thing but for some people playing listening to music helps increase their vibrations which means then you, you can also you're more intuitive the higher your vibrations are other people it's go out for nature it's what the doctor tells you the same darn thing to stay healthy right sure get outside go outside go for a walk connect with nature that i do for me it's the beach and swimming that's my connection that raises my vibrations which makes me more intuitive but then i also do things spiritual tools like i ask the angels every day clear and balance my chakras that takes like a whole minute of my time every day and then sometimes it's things like um taking time to just meditate for one minute to help release some of the heaviness in my head um so i, I encourage people to do that but there's so so many ways and, and and i do it in many different ways so i don't get bored too but basically it's looking at a lot of what any family doctor would tell you to do to stay healthy <laughs> That's what some of what I used to say as a nurse, eat well, go exercise, get fresh air. <laughs> that all increases your intuitive abilities. All right, Karen, stand by. We've got to take our final break for this hour. Exonation. Nation, Karen Forrest is our special guest, KarenForrest.com. And we'll be back as we wrap up tonight's show here in the Exxon with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario. Now, if you'd like to send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com and on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And we are on channel 32 on Simul TV on the Exxon TV channel. For more information about Simul TV and how you can watch us, 724 365, we have movies, we have documentaries, we have interviews. We have a whole bunch of wonderful things. That's at www.simultv.com, channel 32, the X-Zone TV channel. Don't go away. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens and they kept repeating to me over and over again, Simultv.com, Simultv.com. What's Simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a Simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night, I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about Simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. SIMULTV.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about SIMULTV.com. SIMULTV.com. Welcome back, everyone. Karen Forrest is my guest, KarenForrest.com. Uh, first of all, Karen, I want to thank you ever so much for joining us tonight. Always a great pleasure talking to you. Um, has there ever been a time doing what you do, whether it's talking to dead people, talking to your angels, uh, helping people with a paranormal situation that they've gotten themselves into for one reason or another, has there ever been one thing that has just shocked the living heck out of you yeah yeah there's been a few uh especially more with ghosts with, with, with like earthbound release been and doing house clearings the rest is not so shocking 
to me. Um, but but I remember one time when I was doing it was a church clearing. It was the worst clearing I've ever done, like the worst. And it was a it was a Catholic church. The church my parents are married. Having <laughs> things and I was going, the worst. It was horrible. And I was shocked because I'm used to doing clearing, so I, I I've got training in it. I've mm-hmm. been, finally got to do it. But what was shocking is because it was a church. How much on the land and in the church that I felt like. Oh, just I don't like to use this term, but demons like it felt demonic. It was horrible. It was horrible when during the clearing to the point that Archangel Michael shoved me to the side, basically, and said, You're not, you know, you're not standing as close as I normally would be. I normally I vision myself right in the clearing, and they're like, No, and I'm like, I don't want to be there. This is it was like. I was watching a horror movie of demons and zombies. It was crazy, 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 like crazy, horrible <laughs> stuff. Yeah. And so, was- so who took the lead on the clearing there, uh, Archangel Mike, uh, Michael, yeah. or yourself? Oh, it's caught. It's not me. I get paid for it. I take the money. They do the work. I just facilitate it. You don't want Karen <laughs> Force doing it. No, my my vibrations aren't high enough. No, it's my intent is always a divine source clears. Mm-hmm. I facilitate the process, including um, earthbound releasement. No, that was God and Archangel Michael. Uh, it was Archangel Michael that shoved me out of the way and said, stand back. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is nuts. I've never seen anything like this before, ever. And I've done lots of clearings. Yeah. <laughs> Karen, what are your final thoughts and words of wisdom for the Exxon Nation tonight? What I really encourage people to do is have fun just like have fun with working with their angels and their loved ones in heaven it does it's not meant to always be serious when i'm talking to angels they have a sense of humor so does god so a lot of times when i talk to them i talk to them like i would a friend so i tell people relax chill out the more relaxed you are the easier it is to get the messages but just if you want to feel them receive them or, or talk to them just chill out sit down for a minute Invoke one person at a time so it doesn't get confusing who you're hanging out with and hang out with them. Karen, do you give courses? I do. I do workshops and a lot of my training is one-on-one and private mentorship with people. And if people would like to contact you to take a course, how would they best do that? Through your website? Through my website, karenforest.com. You can opt into my um, email list um, to find out what I'm doing in your area. And then any events are always updated on my website. Super. Karen, as always, a great pleasure talking to you. Thank you for everything you do. And once again, thank you for your service. Thank you. It's a pleasure tonight. Take care of yourself. Get some sleep, my friend. Yes. Good night, Karen. Thanks. Oh, Karen, do me yeah. a favor. Yeah. Say hello to the angels for me. Uh, I will. Also, angels and all your loved ones who love to talk. I can feel them. <laughs> Take care, Karen. Blessings Alrighty. to you and yours. And that's it, Exo Nation. Another night here with three fantastic people. We had in our first hour, Jennifer Mag. Second hour, we had Becky guide us in. And of course, this last hour with our good friend in Prince Edward Island, Canada, the one and only Angel Lady. And of course, that is Karen Forrest. Now, I'll be back tomorrow night at uh, 10 o'clock as once again, we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the Exo. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. To my uh, studio producer, the one and only Craig West. Thank you, my man, Mac Alexander, our director of international programming, and my senior executive producer, my wife and my best friend, Laura. So get the coffee on, honey. Make sure it's beautiful mind coffee because I'm coming home. And of course, until tomorrow, remember, my friends, always keep your eyes to the sky and your heart to the light. From everyone here to everyone out there, good night, everyone. Question, what is the name of the unique blend of coffee you get that has been formulated by a neurologist, a neurobiologist, and a pharmaceutical chemist? Answer, you get beautiful mind coffee, a unique coffee blend that tastes great and has herbal ingredients that your brain will love, and it is not just coffee, it's brainalicious. Dr. Rathbone, Dr. Jang, and Dr. Winslow, the scientific team that created Beautiful Mind Coffee, decided to collaborate on a coffee focusing on brain health. As for those herbal ingredients found in Beautiful Mind Coffee, Dr. Rathbone, Dr. Jang, and Dr. Winslow, utilizing their combined extensive scientific research background, 
worked with many natural and herbal products until the exact formulation that is found in Beautiful Mind Coffee was created. With a unique scientific formula not found in any other coffee being sold or served, Beautiful Mind Coffee is the only coffee blend that contains three herbal ingredients found to aid in boosting your daily mental clarity and focus. Every cup of Beautiful Mind Coffee contains scientifically formulated amounts of maca root powder, green tea extract, and American ginseng, all supporting good brain health. Taking care of your brain's health now can help delay or prevent the onset of cognitive dysfunction, including dementia, Alzheimer's, and more general memory loss as you get older, just by enjoying the delicious flavor of our roasted coffee and herbal ingredients found exclusively in Beautiful Mind Coffee. Did you know that cognitive dysfunction also refers to deficits in attention, verbal and non-verbal learning, short-term and working memory, visual and auditory processing, problem-solving, processing speed, and motor functioning? For more on Beautiful Mind Coffee, the three scientists who formulated Beautiful Mind Coffee, and more details on the three unique herbal ingredients in Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca. Beautiful Mind Coffee is now available online at Amazon.ca and Amazon.com. To order Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca today.